What's going on everyone? Ethan Ader here with Blade RC and welcome to the third video of the Blade Fusion 550 build series. In this video we're going to be assembling the tail and attaching it to the main frame. So go ahead and locate parts bag letter B. That's where you'll find your tail boom along with your tail control rod and tail control rod guide. You can go ahead and leave these in the package right now. Right now we just need the tail boom out. You can also locate package M8. That's where you'll find the two tail boom clamps. We're gonna go ahead and install these onto the tail boom. In this step, we're gonna be using the 2.5 millimeter hex driver, so make sure you have one handy. Now that we have our tail boom mounts installed on the tail boom, it's time to mount the tail boom to the main frame. One tip that you can use in order to get your tail belt through the tail boom is to zip tie the tail belt to the end of the ball link joint on the tail control rod. You can slide the tail control rod through the tail boom and the tail control rod will be connected to the tail belt so it will pull it all the way through the tail boom, allowing you to grab it on the other side. Now that our tail boom is mounted on the main frame, we can go ahead and cut this zip tie since the tail belt is coming through the other side of the tail boom. Now is also a good time to look down this side of the tail boom and make sure that there are no twists in the belt going up to the main frame and around the gear. Once you've confirmed that there are no twists in the belt, you can turn the belt 90 degrees to the left. This ensures that the tail rotor spins the correct way whenever the main rotor is turning as well. Up next, we can attach the rear tail boom mounts as well as the tail control rod guide. Now, the guide is gonna be located in bag D1 and the rear tail boom mounts are gonna be located in bag T2. Up next, we are gonna be installing the tail rotor pitch lever to the right tail plate. Now you can find the tail rotor pitch lever in bag T2, and you can find the right tail plate in bag T3, and make sure you have your 2.5 millimeter hex driver handy because that's what we are gonna to use to install these two parts. One thing to keep in mind on the tail rotor pitch lever is that because this is a quick build kit, 
The ball link and the screw attaching the lever to this bracket is already pre-installed from the factory with Loctite at the appropriate torque rating. And the only two screws that you're gonna have to unscrew and apply Loctite to are these two screws right here. One way to verify that there is Loctite in these screws is to slightly try to give pressure to the left side to loosen it. And if there's a decent amount of resistance, then it is already installed with Loctite. Now that the tail rotor pitch lever is on the right tail plate, you can go ahead and locate the left tail plate and tail fin. It's all in one piece and it is located in bag T3. You can also find the tail belt guide bearing and also the rear spacer post and those are both in bag T2. You will want a 2 millimeter hex driver and a 2.5 millimeter hex driver in order to assemble all these parts. One thing to keep in mind is to keep these four screws on this side and then the four screws on the other side all loosened so you can move the two plates forward and backwards. This is so you can easily set the tail belt tension. Nearing the end of the tail assembly, go ahead and locate bag T4 where you can find the tail shaft, the tail rotor, and the tail pitch slider. You will also want a two millimeter hex driver in order to tighten the set screw down to attach the tail rotor to the tail shaft. With the tail rotor and tail pitch slider attached to the tail shaft, we can go ahead and locate the rear tail pulley in bag T4, and we can go ahead and install the tail rotor and tail pulley to the actual helicopter. Now, make sure you have a two millimeter hex driver so that you can loosen up and Loctite the set screws and attach the pulley onto the tail shaft. One thing to keep in mind on the tail shaft, there are two flat spots, one right here and one on the other side. This is where your set screws are gonna line up. These two set screws that are on either side of the rear tail belt pulley, just make sure that they are lined up on the tail rotor when assembling it onto the tail.
With the tail rotor and tail belt pulley installed on the tail, now is a good time to tighten down the four screws on the left tail plate as well as the four screws on the right tail plate. Now, don't lock tight them yet. What we're gonna be doing is moving the tail shaft left and right to see if there's any play within the pulley. As you can see, moving it, there is a small amount of play. This can easily be fixed with the three included shims in bag T4. Basically, if there is any side to side play, you can remove the two set screws and the tail belt pulley. Once those are removed, you can pull out the tail shaft. And to make life easier, you can also remove these four screws as well as this screw and this screw in order for this whole left tail fin and tail plate to pull off the helicopter in order for you to easily slide the shims onto the tail shaft. With those three shims installed, you can see that there is absolutely no back and forth play in the tail shaft anymore. One thing that I like to keep in mind as well is which side of the tail belt pulley that the belt likes to favor. So in this instance, it's riding on that side. Whichever side it's wanting to ride on, I like to put the shims on the opposite side. This kind of offsets the pulley just a little bit in order to help the tail belt not rides so far on one side. Now it doesn't necessarily have to be perfectly in the middle, you just don't want a whole lot of tension on one side. All right, and the last step in the tail assembly is to tighten up the tail belt tension. Now this is done through the four screws on this plate and the four screws on the other plate. Basically you are gonna pull back on these two plates and get tension on the belt, all while tightening down these eight screws in total and that's how you set your tail belt tension. I'll go ahead and show you how I like to do it. And that's how I adjust the tail belt tension on the Fusion 550 whenever I'm by myself. Typically, it's better to have somebody else to pull on these two plates while you are tightening down the eight screws. It just makes things a lot easier. But whenever you're by yourself, I usually like to take this spacer post, pull back like so, all while grabbing the front of the plates to hold the position. And then once I have my position set, I'll use this hand to hold the position while I tighten down all eight screws like you just saw in the video. There's other ways to do it, but that's typically how I like to do it on this helicopter. One good way to check your tail belt tension is to come up to the front of the frame where the belt wraps around this gear. You can go ahead and take any hex driver and push right back here. And the deflection should not be more than four millimeters. Typically, I just eyeball it. And over time, you can kind of tell what is the correct tension. Four millimeters is the general rule in deflection. You basically just don't want any more deflection than that. The Blade Fusion 550 tail assembly and installation is complete. Be sure to stay tuned for the next video where we will be installing the Fusion 550 electronics. Don't forget to leave a like on this video and subscribe to the channel for more Blade RC content. We'll see you guys soon.